listening to Los Angeles' most dangerous group. Listen, 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 listen. The Caliente Show on Dash Radio. Caliente Show, Leila Giancalini. And of course, I'm with Lala and Flo. And I have amazing guests today. Uh, Marcus Smith next to me. How are you tonight? I'm oh, good, Leila. Hi, Lala. Hi, Flo. What's up? What's up, gang? Hey, welcome. So tell us a little bit more about you. You're from London. Come all the way here to LA. How long are you living here? So, uh, yes, I'm from London. My name is Mark Smith. People in Europe and England know me as Rhino. And uh, I moved here in 2008. And uh, should I give you a little bio about myself, a little backstory? Yeah, tell us. Uh, so, I'm known in England uh, as Rhino from the TV show Gladiators. It was a massive hit here in the 90s, massive hit in uh, the UK in the 90s as well. And um, so I've done it for five years. Then I've done bodybuilding, I won the London Men's Heavyweights, the Junior British Championships, and uh, done natural progression into, um, into acting. So um, how you changed from gladiator to, to, to actor? To acting. Um, I suppose the, the, the turning point was uh, I done Batman Begins. Christopher Nolan, who's an Oscar Academy Award winner director, um, was in the casting room. I didn't know who he was at the time. And uh, he actually casted me in Batman Begins. That was with Christian Bale, Liam Neeson, Morgan Freeman. And yeah, I got the bug then, man. And then I've done Robin Hood and uh, done quite a lot of traveling. And then I've done parts of the Caribbean, Argo, you know, stuff like that. And then you're working on a TV series also. Yeah, I've done, a, I've done about five US TV shows, which is great. NCIS LA, The Last Ship, Criminal Minds, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So yeah. What is your role in Criminal I was Paget Brewster is the lead in um, Criminal Minds, and I was a love interest. So uh, let's hope they write me back in. So uh, yeah, I was a boyfriend from London. So how did you start your schooling to um, start acting, or was this something that just naturally you were good at? No, no, no. I'm, I'm not good at anything really. I, I, th <laughs> I think I, I think it, in anything you want to do in life, you, you know, you have to practice if you want to make progress. So I, I just come from a hard work ethic. Um, that's the kind of stable I'm from, but yeah, the way I got into it, I went to an acting school in Pinewood Studios where they filmed James Bond and so forth, and uh, here I went to Howard Fine and uh, another acting coach called John Kirby. How's your experience compared to London working in the US? In, in, so how do I compare the London what acting scene compared yes. to the US scene? Um, I think this is the melting hub, you know, it's Hollywood. And there's a, there's a lot more like auditions. There is a lot of film and work in London as well in Europe. Um, but I wanted to come here. One, I like the weather. I like the space. I like the pace of life. I like the lifestyle. And there's just more, more opportunity. I think. I think it is what they say. It's the the land of opportunity, right? If you're willing to work yeah. hard, you can achieve. Is it easy for you to get gigs because you've been working with such big names already? Uh, it helps. Um, and anything in life, you know, when they say like, what have you done? Uh, you know, what you got coming up? What are you up to? When you have something to talk about, then people are interested. So yeah, once the, res the resume got a bit more extensive and bigger, then uh, yeah, definitely people got a bit more hyped and excited and give you the chance and opportunity to work more. How are your accent, your London accent? Is that a, a problem sometimes? Oh, it's something that benefits to you. No, um, so you know we do uh, we do all different accents, like whether it's an American accent or whether it's a Jamaican accent or whether it's a Can you UK change? accent. Can you yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God, that's awesome. So, um, you know, you read for many different roles and accents and different auditions. That's awesome. And your body, everything is natural. I'm yeah, I saw yeah. some pictures on your Instagram. MCT oil. <laughs> I, I, take, I put MCT oil, uh, MCT oil in my coffee in the morning. I kind of do a kind of keto diet to be to be fair. And what exactly is that? Well, it's just primarily protein and you know low carbs. You stay away from like rice, potato, bread, pasta, food that kind of blows. Oh you. man, um, there goes do, that diet for me. I do more protein and vegetables, and you know I eat quite clean. But um, when I, are you? I, I do a lot of work. I do a lot. Of, I've done four marathons. You know, I've done boxing fights. Uh, I played tennis. I run. I box. Uh, 
So you don't have any cheat days where you just like yeah yeah yeah. If I go to In and Out, if I go to In and Out, I'll do four patties, one cheese, no <laughs> dump, a few of the kids fries, and no milkshake. And no sweets. Sweets. Uh, I go towards dark chocolate and almonds. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You have to have the box on so you know you have to have portion control and consistency. What is your biggest do. your biggest challenge in life? Wow, biggest challenge in life. It's a good question. Um, boo, biggest challenge. Uh, being a father, a husband, a motivator. Um, being healthy. I mean, they all kind of blend into one, is you know, being motivated. Yeah, I what? think in life you just got to keep going. As Martin Luther King said, you know, if you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. Or whatever you do, don't stop moving. So I think yeah. in life, as long as you keep moving, you're gonna, you, you know, you're gonna. People are gonna want to help you. It's when you stop and lay down, people step over you, man, because everyone's got their own problems in life. Mm -hmm. I like or I chew. <laughs> what do you do to keep yourself motivated when you don't feel that motivation? Mm, what do I do to keep myself motivated? Um, I think of the, the things I want to achieve, the goals I want to pursue. Yeah, I'm, I'm a pretty motivated person. I suppose the, the lifestyle I, I led is totally different to my kids. So when I was coming up, I never envisaged living in Los Angeles, much less getting even on a plane. So. For me, waking up to the sun every day here, I'm like, wow, this is so cool, man. So, what's an, a, like that's a not goal? BSE, but that's straight talk. What's a like a goal or an achievement that you haven't reached yet? Yeah, you're like, I'm waiting for that for well, this big I'm, one. I'm waiting for the rollover on the lottery for a billion dollars <laughs> to build up and then to win that. That that would be that would be a dream. <laughs> what's my what's my chance of that happening? Um, keep acting. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Um, what do you like most, uh, boxing or MMA? Because I saw you on the boxing show most. Uh, yeah, yeah, Tom. Tom yeah, is Tom, Tom yeah, Lofer, yeah, Tom's yeah. a great guy. Um, big shout out to Tom, Triple G, and all the boxers out there, actually. I love boxing. I don't, I don't really, uh, I can't really do MMA, to be fair. So I have the utmost respect for the MMA fighters out there. But boxing is, is more what I understand and more what, what I can do. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I steer more to, to, to boxing. I love it. Um, question, what is coming soon? What, what is coming soon? What is coming soon in terms of work? Like at work, yes. <laughs> um, March 15th um, is the release of Yardi, which is directed by Idris Elba, which you fellow Americans know him from The, um, from the Wire with uh, Michael B. Jordan back in the day. And, uh, you know, he's a well-renowned global actor now. And that was his first directorial film debut, Yardi. And we filmed it in uh, Jamaica and London. Oh my God, that's and awesome. There's a top guy in, in the lead and that is Amel Amin. Um, a great up-and-coming actor, look out for him. So yeah, March the 15th. Can you tell me your role? Uh, Rags is my role. He's a proper bad boy. And he's got no allegiance. To anybody Ooh. just want to make money. I you love it. <laughs> I know you are a pussy all who wouldn't fuck up to get the money. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Flo, you like them lyrics? Yeah, it was cool. Flo, you have anything you want to ask him? Yeah, um, how do you feel um, your race plays into your you getting jobs? Uh, I think it's a great time now. Um, I think roles have really opened up for black people now. Um, Especially if you have colored eyes, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it was, when I was growing up, to have green eyes, I, I always used to get commented on, because my mom and dad haven't got green eyes. My, my mom's Cherokee, Indian, Jamaican, and my dad's Chinese and half African. So I don't really know where the green eyes came from. <laughs> but my kids have blue eyes because my wife's English, so that kind of makes sense. So, um, but yeah, getting back to your question, I think loads, loads more roles have opened up for black people. Uh, I think now's the time, the days of Sidney Poitier back in the day, and it was hard, man. But, you know, so many leading men now are black guys on TV shows and, and, and in film. Is racism 
equally the same in England as it is in America or different? No, I, I think I think it's different here. I I I'll tell you what I watched. Um Black Klansman. Mm -hmm. So Spike Lee, big shout out to him getting nominated for an Oscar for Best Director. Um yeah, it's, it's a bit shocking because they showed footage at the end of the demonstration in 2017 when the white guy, sorry to say white guy and black guy, so that's how we kind of speak in the UK. So mm. he, he's demonstrating uh, against um, the, 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 the flag, correct? Mm -hmm. And the black guys. He reverses the car, he knocks over and kills the white lady, correct? Mm -hmm. And, and it was just, it, it, it hurt me to see that this is still going on in America in 2017. In London, that doesn't really happen because it's such a melting pot. African, white, Jamaican, Indian, everyone's there and everyone kind of gets on and lives literally just around the corner from each other. But in LA, it feels like you're, we're in a bit of a bubble where everyone kind of gets on, but you go a little bit out, out of state it's kind of a bit segregated, and I kind of forget. And what it bring that brings me to the situation with the uh, Jesse or what is his name, the guy that um, Jesse Smollett. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how do you feel about that situation after hearing the details? Flo, I, I retweeted um, a thing saying, which my friend done about, um, you know, this is bad what happened to him, and this is crazy, it's an outrage. And there's many, many black celebrities that jumped out and retweeted and Instagram and the, the whole thing saying this is an outrage. And I, I was shocked that they beat him up at 4 a.m. in the morning when he's getting a Subway sandwich. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, as the story unfolds in the last 72 hours and he's obviously being indicted and he, he went on bail earlier today for 100, 100 grand. Um, it's shocking, man. If this if this is true, I mean, prove, until proven guilty, he's still innocent, correct? Right, but... But it's not looking good, man. Well, he was innocent. It, it's funny how he has to be proven innocent before guilt, or guilt, guilt uh, innocent before guilty, but the media jumped on it so fast yeah. and targeted Donald Trump and targeted white people and this and that. But the story never made sense to me from the very beginning when I heard it. I see. Because what white person is going to go to that great length yeah. to do all that in Chicago of all places, all places. with the mega hat and the noose? And the noose, that's the one. The noose. Who, will yeah. sign the noose Who the would do that yeah. in 2019, you know? I mean, this ain't Alabama. That might happen in Alabama still. That might happen in maybe some parts of Kentucky or North Carolina, but in Woody Allen never got indicted and everybody knows about that story. Yeah, there's many, many accounts. Yeah. So I, I see what you're saying. So I, I agree with you 100% that if it's a black guy, do they exaggerate the story or really, it, or it seems like they really want to annihilate them and by the powers that be and, and make an example of them? Yes, that's the way it appears to me. I agree with you. And you being like big and muscular and all, and you know, you know, bald head. If you put on a, um, a hoodie and walk down the street, you could be a target by the police, or you could be a target by the enemy. It's uh, the uh, your own black people, yeah. and um, it's a different world as a black man. But a lot of people don't understand that. So you being in this business. Um, and being able to work is almost a blessing because usually they use the same black people over and over again. The Morgan Freemans, yeah. the Denzel Washington. I mean, it's a handful of them that they use over and over and over again, you know? I mean, I've seen, I totally agree with what you're saying, Flo, and I see a film a few days ago called The Hurt You Give. I've seen that, The mm -hmm. Hurt You Give. It's a bad film, isn't it? But basically, I don't want to mess Thug up. Thug Life. Huh? It's called Thug Life, The Hate You Give. Oh, okay, there you go. And it's basically, you know, a, a young black guy um, who sees a girl who's, who, who he grew up with when he was a baby, sees her at a party, um, they come out because there's a shooting inside, he gets her in the car uh, to make sure she gets home safely, they're driving back, the police, the police man pulls him over and her over, um, starts harassing him, 
fellas are eating, and he, the girl's saying, oh, put, quick, put your hands on the dash, we'll put, you know, we're gonna get in trouble. Um, he says, no, no, I'm insured, man, everything's fine. I've got nothing to worry about, why am I, no. Um, so he's questioning the policeman saying, why did you pull me over, why this, why that? And um, long story short, he reaches for his afro, his, his brush, to brush his hair, and the policeman kills him, and this has happened so many times in America, man, it is, it's shocking, and it's only coming to light more and more now, because people have cell phones, and are taking videos, and that's been going on for so, it's hurtful, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty hurtful, but FBI statistics say that more white people get shot by police than black people get shot by police, and so what do you believe? Do you believe that's true? No way. <laughs> <laughs> no way. I'm sorry to laugh. Yeah. No, no way. I think it is comical, but they say, but the, the, the statistics say that more white people get shot by police than black people get shot by police. Actually, they say that the black shootings have went down, but I don't see that. There's 2.2 million people in prison in America. It's, it's, it's financially viable. It's privatized. Um, there was a time that I read that people, white or black, were just getting thrown in prison even if you got a spliff. You, what do you call it here? It's like having a blunt or weed, weed yeah. chronic, yeah, whatever. But, yeah. So even, it, and, you, and once you're in prison and you're in the prison system, it's hard to kind of break that off. So to get thrown in prison just for having a, having a bit of weed, I mean, really, let's be honest, that fucks up your life, man, yeah. um, going into the prison system. But because it's financially viable and it's privatized, those, those people are making some serious money. Were you ever in prison? No. Oh, because you got that prison body. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, you look like you didn't, you're like you didn't live like 15 years. <laughs> yeah. Or the push-ups. Yeah. I know, right? But um, yeah, man, um, <clears throat> you think the accent helps you? Yeah, uh, with police? Yeah. 100%. I, as when I got pulled over in Palm Springs, I was pulled over um, south of like Hauser um, and La Brea, down by like s south, south La Brea and third, another like 15 minutes south. And um, he said, uh, what's your name? I said, oh, oh hi, um, my name's Mark, Mark Smith. And he went, where you from? I said, in my best possible accent, I said, hi, I'm from London. He said, you've been drinking? And I said, uh, oh no, I'm a sports a sportsman, I, I'm an athlete, I, I never I, I don't drink at all. And he, he looked at me to see if I was lying, and he went, okay, you can go. And I said, thank you very much, have a good evening. And what was the reason, initial reason for you? I, I didn't even ask him. Wow. See, <laughs> it's even worse in Glendale. Me? three or four cops for one pullover just on anybody wow. so yeah so don't and it definitely even on a traffic stop they put you out and they make you sit on the curb while they look in your car and that's on a traffic stop in glendale so you don't want to get pulled over over there but um you know just enjoy your life as much as you can bro and keep your lawyer on 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 speed dial <laughs> Yeah. Don't scare him, Flo. Yeah. It's not that but bad. Flo, no, 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 I appreciate Flo giving me the heads up. And, yeah, yeah, he's keeping it real with me. He's just trying to help me. Do yeah. you feel more discrimination here in US when London? I, I don't feel any discrimination, uh, uh, discrimination in London. Um, Have you Africa, traveled all over the world? All over the world. Africa, Australia. Yeah, I've been all over. You know, they tell us in America that, you know, we're not accepted in other parts of the world. But I've been all over the world. I've been um, to Asia. I've been to Europe. And I felt that I had more love in the other countries than I did here. Yeah, I feel like the world, they, everyone loves America. It's quite, it's, America is portrayed as the land of the free and the land of opportunity. And people just love the accent and, and the confidence of Americans. You know that's funny that that's that's true. They don't look at me as black. They look no. at me as American. American yeah, that would but in America, they look at me as black, and that's funny. Yeah, that's funny. Mm -hmm. But the funny part, you guys not black. You guys brown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's they, why I say they chocolate. Class, they class any. They classify anything. Yeah, that's true too. Now there are some black people, and they're not even black. They're like um. Dark, yeah, dark they're, they're no, they're like um. 
Like there's some Nigerians that are like super super black, and there's some um, Indians that are super super black. Yes, you know, yes. yeah, yeah. from the, the the Indians, but they just got the nice ass hair. You know That's what I'm right. saying? Yeah. <laughs> but um, I think being huh? sexy. Huh? They're called maroons. <laughs> Say it again. They're called maroons. Oh, maroons. maroons yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Way back. Yeah, maroons, and yeah. um, what I find is funny. It's I'm with. What did I do? I lost my train of thought. What I was oh, when you, uh, as you as a black guy traveling the rest of the world and they don't see you as black, they see you as American. Yeah, they see me as American, and that's pretty interesting that only here it, that they see me as a race. Oh, but what I was going to say is that in all countries that I've seen, even in an Asian country, if you're brown, they see you as a lower than the fair skin. Because when I was in Asia, if you're a brown skinned Asian, you usually work in, in, the, in, you're a maid or you're working in social services. But if you're the light skin, you have, you're a businessman or, you know, you're looked at, even in the Philippines, I've been there. If you're a brown skin, you're a helper. If you're fair skin, and then I see Philippines trying to bleach their skin so they can be fair skin. So the brown color, just does something all over the world to people. Is it like that in England too? No, no, I'm not. Because I heard England was pretty racist in, in some spots. I, I think it's it's more it's more under a blanket. It's not so so obvious. Yeah, like here where it's like blatantly obvious. Yeah, but me, I, maybe it's, maybe it's my naivety because I don't really see people like that unless it's so obvious. So I I just take everyone. At face value, I come in here straight into the in the studios, and there's like six of us in here, and six six of you guys, and I, I'll be courteous to all of you and, and be friendly to all of you individually, and, and um, I, I won't be horrible to anyone because of their color, religion, creed, or faith. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. So I, I believe what you get out, you know, you, you get back, and it's it's nice to be nice, isn't it? it costs nothing. Yeah. The world is like that, man. The world would be a better place. It would. Well, um, you have anything else to say, later? Yeah, is anything that you dream or you want to do that you haven't done it yet? Is there anything I dreamed of that I haven't done yet? Um, oh, I'm going to be 50 September 30th. I'm thinking about jumping out of a plane. Nice. 50? You look, right? like, you look like apparently getting 40. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to jump, jump out. Jump on the plane. Yeah. That's cool. I've done that before. <laughs> so me and Flo will do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I just had um, 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 cancer exploratory surgery today. And, and so, um, you know, I live my life one day at a time to oh, the fullest cool. as I can. You know what I'm saying? So... I was in the hospital t this morning and I'm at the studio today. You know, oh, what I'm that's saying? incredible, man. Now, now my pain pills is starting to wear off, but um, oh, man. <laughs> but I'm rolling with it. So yeah, I get you, man. It's like when you get at a certain age, you just live one day at a time and just do what you do. You know what I'm saying? It don't. It's no thought in it anymore. You know, I don't really care what anybody thinks. If I want to come in nice looking, I do. If I yeah. don't, I put on my Uggs and my, you know what I'm saying? So you have a whole different perspective And we're like, life. whatever, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, you have a whole different perspective on life because you won't, it's so easy to die today. Man, it's so true. And it's like, you never know what's gonna happen tomorrow, so just live the best you can for right now, you know what I'm saying? And don't be stressed. The words you're saying, Flo, is so true. I mean, we all know some, you know, successful people, whether it's financially or whatever, but the people I know, or well, some people I know that that do really, really well in business. I say, yeah, how you doing, man? You good? Oh man, I'm just lucky to be alive, baby. And, and there's, there's one particular guy, and he always says that I'm just lucky to be alive, man. And it's like he, he really means it from the heart. You know, because as you get older, you really appreciate like your health, and you only realize how healthy you are when something goes wrong, whether it's cancer, diabetes, or a broken leg, or a wheelchair, mm -hmm. and then. For us now, when we just get up and walk and we're healthy and, and you know, it's just nice, man. Yeah, well, you can have all the money in the world, but if you're unhealthy, you're, I mean, look at um, um, Steve Jobs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, look at 
you know, there's a lot of people that um, was Superman. What's his name? Christopher, uh, Christopher Reeves, Reeves was yeah. in a was in a wheelchair. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, yeah, you can have billions of dollars, but if you if you're um, not being able to walk or drive your car or wipe your own butt, yeah. <laughs> what are you living for? You know, push me in front of a train and let's get it over with. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, so yeah, um, I, I feel you. Every day is a is a good day, especially after mm -hmm. 40. Every day above ground is a good day. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right, man. We've all been to enough funerals and lost enough people to Oh, yeah, for sure. So everyone out there, live your best life, man. Believe and achieve and pursue your dreams, no matter how big or small they are. Beautiful. And be nice. Yeah. Yeah, be nice. But if anyone tries to fuck with you, then fuck them up. No, I'm, joking, I'm, joking. I'm joking, I'm joking. No, there's, there's the, that's true too. I mean, you know, protect your own, you know? Yeah. I mean, I used to be into the streets and gangbang and all that old stuff and rah, rah, rah. I did a lot of time in the pen. Um, but um, I don't get mad now unless you mess with my family yeah. or my friends. That's, that's it. Okay. Otherwise, it's whatever, you know? Damn. Yeah, yeah because... Um, it takes too much to get upset, especially when you're older. Like yeah. you get you, you get mad now. You got a headache. You, you got to sit down. Your, your blood pressure's too high. You know why I want to get mad? You know so no, it's better just to chill and let yeah. it just ride. I totally, totally relate with you because in, in your twenties, a little thing can make you fly off the handle. Bad road rage. Someone cuts you up. And, now I'm like, oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll be in a, I'll be dri I, you know, I used to drive so fast, you know, I, cause I had a CLS 55, so it was, always, it was always so fast. Yeah. And now, you know what I'm saying, I'm chilling in my little Toyota, just driving, That's you know, it. the speed limit, sometimes under the speed limit, just chilling, people are honking, I'm like, I don't care. Just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't care, man. I've been there where y'all were, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah because, um, Especially living in LA. LA makes you, um, everything is so fast and hustle, hustle here. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's not like chill, you know? So, um, living in LA brings out the beast in you, in some, you know, mm -hmm. especially, you know, and um, sometimes you gotta remember that, you know, you're just, you gotta chill, you know what yeah, I'm saying? That's yeah. good advice, man. Yeah. Seriously, good advice. Oh, anyway, man. Nice meeting you. Nice to meet you guys, man. Thanks for having me. Thank yeah. you for coming. Yeah. yeah. Share your social media so people can follow you. One hundred percent. I'll follow Dash now. Big shout out to Dash. To and Kelly the Kelly Big Show. And the Kelly Show. Oh yeah, of course. And I just started following you, so me too. LLS VIP. All right. So let's, let's do it all. I'll do it all. I promise. So tell yeah. everybody your your Instagram and all your social media. So all social media: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram is all at Mark Rhino Smith, M A R K, and then Rhino like the animal R H I N O Smith S M I T H. Hi, I'm Mark Rhino Smith. I'm with Layla and Lala. Check out the Caliente Show on Dash Radio. It's a great interview. Respect. Bless. Yeah. <laughs>